Suriname, South America. Today, its thick rainforest help preserve a strange brew of African and Asian culture. Getting here is not an easy trip, but the payoff is huge. A chance to witness rituals never before captured on film, where music, dance, and trances awake the spirits, and sacred objects come alive, like spirit horses from Java, talking drums from Africa. But the ultimate prize for me? A hand-carved paddle still made and used by the descendants of African slaves. Beautiful. Get ready to rock and roll in Suriname. It's a whole other kind of adventure. I'm Ian Grant. I'll go anywhere and do anything to find the world's most amazing objects. Many have stories to tell and priceless secrets to reveal. Some I'll sell in my shop back home. Others I'll keep for my own collection. It's a crazy way to make a living, but I love what I do because I never know what I'll find next. When exploring Suriname, you have to start in the capital of Paramaribo. This is great. I actually get a great kick out of this. We're driving on the right side of the car in a totally unfamiliar city. People all over the place walking across. It's like a real-time video game. Suriname's in South America, wedged between the two Guyanas. The capital, Paramaribo, sits near the coast, but heads south and it's rainforest all the way to the Amazon. The first people here were the Amerindians who still keep their culture alive. Then came Dutch settlers who brought African slaves to work the sugar plantations. After slavery was abolished, they brought over Chinese contract laborers and workers from India and Indonesians from the island of Java. For its size, Suriname has one of the most diverse populations in the world, which makes it fantastic because with so many cultures, there's lots of unusual objects out there. Cyrano? Hey, Ian. Hey, all right. Nice to meet you in person. Yes, Mom. Welcome at last. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Come on, ready let's to go. take off? Yes, we go. We head for the plantation right away. Cool. My guide Serrano is taking me upriver to an old sugar plantation where Javanese descendants still live. Tonight, they'll be doing an ancient ritual dance called Jadalan. But the object I really want to see, spirit horses set to put dancers into a trance. This place is amazing. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. Nobody's here. There are no tourists here. This has to be like what the Caribbean was 50 years ago. I like it a lot. These were plantations, now they are villages. To get to the village, we have to pass through the old Maramboro plantation, the reason the Javanese were brought here. The village is uh, right over there. It was a slave plantation, and for hundreds of years it was the biggest sugarcane plantation of uh, Suriname. This place was notorious for its brutality, but it's been closed now for 25 years. By the time we get to the village, they're almost ready to start the trance dance. This is great, you know, everyone's got this sort of sense of expectancy, all these kids on these pallets hanging out ready for the big trance dance. You ready for this thing to get started? Yeah! I get my first look at the famous spirit horses, the mystical object at the center of the ceremony. The whole ritual starts with the horses. Mm -hmm. By dancing on the horses, they allow the spirits to come into the dancer who's riding the horses. Everything is out like of balance. Like yeah. What did he say? He said you have to be careful with it and you have to put it on a decent way back because it's, okay, it's, no, it's I a spirit horse. Okay, no, I will listen to him, absolutely, yes. yeah. The spirit horse is the sort of object I'd normally love to get. But as I often discover, not everything's for sale. And that's okay. This horse is 32 years old. In 32 years old. That was his father. He made those horses 32 years ago. It's because you were very specific. Okay, so he he's taken over the management of this thing from his father. Okay. And he has to keep the family tradition because this is in a family. You know, I buy stuff all over the world, but there are objects that it just doesn't seem right to even 
<laughs> think about buying. This actually is one of them. No, you know, no. It belongs here and it should stay here, at yes, least in my be mind. Because this, this horse has gone through so many rituals yeah. to get its value. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's something that you look at and enjoy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. I may not be buying the spirit horse, but I do get something almost as valuable. The rare chance to witness this trance dance. It's the first time in Suriname this has ever been filmed. This ritual started 500 years ago when Islam came to Java. Those who resisted the new faith called on animal spirits to give them supernatural powers in battle. So through each shift in the music, the spirits are getting closer and closer to getting into the dancers. One by one, the dancers go into the animal trance. They start as wild horses. The head shaman, or dukul, ushers the spirits into the body. If the spirit's too powerful, the dancer can hurt himself. So the dukul has to calm the spirits down. To settle the horse spirit takes powder, perfume, and a special rock from Indonesia, and stroking their heads like a horse. Earlier, a bunch of these guys were joking around with each other. Now you look in their eyes, serious business. Next, the men turn into jaguars. And just like jaguars, they eat other animals. I don't think that's good news for the chickens. So are they really in a trance, or is it all an act? Take a look at this guy, and you tell me. Then, with a wave of the spirit horse, the monkey takes over. The monkey part of the trance dance, clearly why the crowd shows up. Spirits come, and the spirits go. The tacoon helps the spirits leave the body, and the dancers start to come out of the trance. Last guy's out of the trance, festival's over. Everyone's clearing out. Once the trance is done, the dancers go back to their lives as if nothing happened. Trance dance is over. Time for some of Suriname's finest brew. Cheers. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Next, I meet the most famous drummer in Suriname. Master the Apinti, the talking drum the slaves used to send messages. And I get to witness the forbidden voodoo religion called Winti, another ritual that's never been filmed in Suriname. And later, I fly deep into the rainforest to find the descendants of escaped slaves. I survived the flight, but the boat ride is another story. We lost the helpers at the other end of the boat. I'm in Suriname, South America, but at the moment, that's about all I know. Been on this weird red clay road for the last half an hour. I'm trying to find Ernie Wolf, one of the top drummers in the Caribbean. But all I've got is this map and this general, ah, uh, it's over here kind of directions. After an hour, I managed to find Ernie's place. Ernie's the master of the talking drum, called the Apinti. The drum has an amazing history, and supposedly, Ernie has a couple to sell. Ernie! Fawaka. Ah, nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you, too. Yeah, likewise. So this is, this is where it all comes together, yeah. huh? For now, I have these three for sale. Uh-huh. Should we check them yeah, out? Okay. All right. See, this one is a fine one. It's, it's been tuned already. It's ready to play. Ready to play? Yeah. And these ones haven't been, or how do you... Just you just you know do this Knock with the hammer, in. yeah, mm -hmm. and you get it tuned. Wow, that was a big change. Yeah. Just that little switch. 
and maybe if you can get this sound out, you can do this. You can do that. <laughs> I can't do that. That's all right. That's all right. They're beautiful drums, but yeah. they're much more than just drums to you, right? It was brought from Africa by the slaves, and it was forbidden by law to play in this drum. The white men, when they heard this, maybe this sound coming from out the forest, they know that it would be a message for the people on his plantation. So and, uh, it, was, it was forbidden. Can you give me an idea of pricing on them? Or? It's going to be like $300. Inevitably, I like the old one. So that's a, a fine choice. Can you give me a fine price on it? We can take maybe uh, $25 off. And I'll, I'll buy you a Parbo beer. How's that Okay, sound? yeah. That, 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 <laughs> that was a quick, along with a the quick decision. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. It's a deal. And we'll, okay. will we hear you play? Can you play this one later tonight? Yeah, yeah, we can play it. And we can have it purified for you also. So you That's don't just go with a drum, but you go with a real traditional drum. Seriously? Yeah. That would be outstanding. Being able to buy the drum is great, but having it blessed with a genuine winty ceremony is way more than I expected. The Apinti drum is a big part of this homegrown religion called winty. It's an offshoot of the voodoo religion that came over with the slaves. And for us, another first. The first time a winty ceremony has been filmed in Suriname. A hell of a lot more festive than when I was a kid sitting in a church view at 10 in the morning on Sundays. These people believe there are healing spirits called Winty all around. They never know which person the Winty will enter, but when it does, the trance begins. During the ritual, everyone drinks beer to welcome the spirits. Now you are one with a drum, so maybe you, you, you get in trance also. <laughs> you never know. More beer and I will. <laughs> one thing about the people in Suriname, they don't hold back. The Winty are definitely making their presence known. Then the dancing stops. It's my big moment. The drum I bought from Ernie gets a winty blessing from the head priest. Next trip, by plane. It's the only way I can get to where I'm heading, into the heart of the rainforest. That's where I'll find the Maroons, descendants of slaves who escaped into the jungle, and hopefully get to buy the carved paddle they're famous for. It's a neat paddle. I haven't seen one like this anywhere else in the world. 